FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's July 5th, 2017. Well, if you've been watching the meltdown on college campuses these days, you have to wonder, how did things get like this? Why is this generation of millennials so disturbed? And recently, the demand for for mental health services on college campuses is probably going higher than the demand for opioids at this point. And <laughs> we, we've got with us uh, Dr. John Huber. Dr. Huber, your chairman, mental health professional and university professor, uh, been in mental health for over 20 years. So we are thrilled to have you back on. Thanks for having me back. Hey, so what is going on with this generation here? Suicides, we see just uh, just these students uh, seem to be a lost generation who are really unable to cope with the demands of modern society. How did we get to this point? Well, I think what, what's happened is that uh, this generation lived with lots of uh, uh, support from their families. You know, we used to call them helicopter moms and things like that. And what we see is that they haven't had to deal with things like failure on their own before. And, you know, when I get parents who come in, one of the things I try to get them to do is, you know, there's, there, there's a time when our kids are little, when it's okay for them to fail at something and we can teach them how to deal and how to cope. And it's hard as a parent. I mean, I have my own kids and I don't like to see them fail. I don't like to see them struggle with things. But when they when they have those kind of items in their life, whether it's losing at a, in a sporting event or maybe, you know, not writing a good enough paper at school and they get a bad grade. You know, we if we teach them how to cope, how to deal, they turn out to be stronger and believe in themselves and can handle these types of, of conflicts, whereas if they've been coddled, so to speak, they never develop those internal skills to get through that. And so as a result, what's happening is, you know, I'm not saying these people didn't love their kids. In fact, that's they maybe loved them too much. They they didn't want them to suffer consequences for failures. So they would jump in and clean things up and keep them from dealing with that. And now they're becoming adults and we're having to deal with it as a society. Yeah, you you, re, you really raise a great point, doctor, and that is that uh, I kind of go with the Nietzsche phrase, anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And really, my personal philosophy for what that's worth is you don't learn anything from your successes. Your successes come as a result of learning from your failures. And yet these helicopter parents and this overly permissive generation a uh, disgraced uh, correspondent uh, commentator, Bill O'Reilly, calls it cowardly parenting, where the yes. parents are afraid of their children. They're afraid that Johnny's going to cry. And how did this get to be in vogue here? What happened to real parenting, which is, I'm thinking back to a movie called The Boiler Room, where uh, the kid is like really messing up. He's running like an illegal casino. He's working in a pump and dump shop. And... <laughs> selling worthless stocks. And his father is a federal judge says to him, Hey, I'm not your friend. I'm not your buddy. I'm here to tell you when you screw up. I mean, I've told my kids that numerous times. I said, if you're looking for a friend, you came to the wrong place. Yeah. Eventually when my kids, now that they're in the twenties, thirties, we're friends because my role has changed as a parent, but your role when these children are at a young age is to let them know, to give them uh, to act as a feedback loop, if you will, and let them know that they're screwing up. Right. That that's a very good point, and and it's it's difficult. I mean, we kind of fostered this in schools when we started, and I started my career as a school psychologist, and we started having kids go through activities and play games, and and there were no winners. Of course, the kids knew better, and so the first thing the kids learned is adults lie, <laughs> and we can't trust them. But at the same time, everybody gets a trophy, so there's sort of this saccharine sweet support that they get, but there's no substance there. 
Yeah, well, this participation trophy, I remember the first time I experienced it, my oldest, Chelsea, you know, finished up a very, put it charitably, a lackluster extracurricular soccer season. And we go to uh, have lunch at a pizzeria and the coach has a box full of trophies and everybody gets one. And I'm (laughs) thinking to myself, my kid doesn't deserve to get this trophy. What is this about? I had never encountered anything like this before, doctor. And and yet now that's the way it works in safe spaces. What's the matter? It's not safe enough in college, these spaces. <laughs> I mean, where did we go right here? Well, and then and then we turn around and, and now everybody's friend is on on uh, Facebook. So they, they don't have real human friends. I mean, they're there online. But if you get sick, nobody's going to make you chicken soup. <laughs> You know, and so yeah. again, it's like they they have a, a soda, but no no real substance. It's all all sugar. Yeah, it's a, or saccharin. Even worse, it's artificial yes. sweeteners uh, that are really bad for you. Even worse than sugar, it's a high fructose corn syrup uh, friendship. <laughs> And what is the point? I like that. <laughs> I like that high fructose corn syrup friendship. Yeah, it's 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 really. They're just living in a bubble. And then I guess what happens, doctors, they get to college and try as the college administrators might to to make it a safe place for them, to shield them from all negative influences, all failure and all adversity. These kids are melting down now. Totally. And they're falling apart. They don't know how to make decisions on their own. And, you know, the colleges are trying, but they're failing. And I think ultimately it's going to be up to the business world to pick up the slack. And I'm seeing that I get I get consults from from companies that have, you know, client or employees that they've hired. And within three months, they're they're turning their resignation because their job doesn't have any meaning. (laughs) And and it's really bizarre. I mean, a simple fix for one of the companies was just make make them require uh, have required hours of volunteer work in the community to keep their job. And all of a sudden now their job has meaning because they have to go work at Habitat for Humanity uh, to keep it. Maybe, maybe they should just to send them for a public caning like they do in uh, <laughs> Singapore. Maybe that would help toughen their butts up a little bit. I mean, really, doctor, I mean, you're not helping your child by attempting to shield them from reality from what really is suffering of of the most benign types, right? It really is benign, Uh, but that really helps your kid. It helps them, uh, you know, look, I got bullied in high school quite a bit, not like to the point where they were beating me up every day and stealing my homework like some of these kids encounter in urban environments, but, you know, it wasn't a positive experience. And yet I know today that, uh, that that was a beneficial experience because I made it one because it incorporated into my personality, made me a tougher person, made me more self-sufficient and uh, able to to deal with uh, with anger and emotional outbursts of those around me much much more effectively. Maybe even made me a better parent. I don't know. You have to ask my children about that one. <laughs> but what do they have to compare it to? So don't I, I wouldn't take that too, too seriously. There. <laughs> yeah, but they all turned out well. Um, awesome. Look, I mean, they're they're in my particular instance. You know, my wife passed on when they were very young. Now this would this is a tragedy and really affected them for life. But yes. I see so many positives that came as a result of it as well. They're much more self sufficient than any of their friends. We had a policy in our house. You get into trouble, you get yourself out, uh, and I'm not interfering unless I have to go to school and talk to the principal. And that very rarely ever happened. A few times with the oldest, but the other two, you know, they're much more able to deal with things. So how do you learn when you've got this protective bubble against you, around you, surrounding you, compliments of mom and dad, your helicopter mom, who, you know... Like, look, I tried to make all of my kids events at school, but every now and then I'd miss one. And I'm sure Mm -hmm. they felt bad about it. I did too. But this overindulgence 
It looks to be the downfall of civilization as we know it. Well, I think things are changing. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a believer in the human spirit, and I think we're going to be resilient. I think we're learning that, hey, this maybe wasn't the way to go. And I know I have some millennials who work for me, and they're amazing. I mean, you know, there are some good ones in there, too. You just mentioned your own kids. And, you know, they're the ones whose parents, you know, when they signed up for, you know, like, like my kids, we we went into martial arts and we talked to them about this is a commitment, you know, and you're going to do this when you get to your black belt, we can talk about stopping at that point, but you're going to go through this. And, you know, there are times when my kids are like, I want to give up. That's, you know, I hate this. You know, I wanted to go over to my friend's house, but I had practice tonight. And, and, uh, you know, it's like, look, you made a commitment and, and we're going to go through with that. And in fact, my daughter still hasn't gotten her black belt. My son now has a second degree black belt. Wow. And, uh, but my daughter's, you know, getting ready to, to be in high school here. And the rules are she can't go dating until she gets her black belt. <laughs> <laughs> well, pity the poor guy who tries to mess around with her when she's got her black belt. Even with the brown, I think she could definitely inflict some damage uh, should the need arise. But seriously, that is accountability at its best. Um, I remember reading a book by Lee Iacocca, how he rescued Chrysler, and right. he refers to what the situation they had as the luxury of adversity, Right. It is a luxury. It is the greatest is. learning experience. You know, I've almost gone bankrupt a couple of times and hey, it wasn't pleasant. It's certainly not something that I want to repeat in my life. It was hell and I was unhappy as hell, uh, which, but I learned that uh, A, you know, I have to dig deep in myself, find find the resources to deal with the situation. And B, I learned that it was really stupid to be unhappy at that point because looking at it in retrospect, hey, it, it worked out well and you shouldn't be a victim of external, you shouldn't make yourself a victim of externalities, external situations that you may or may not be able to control or certainly uh, you should have prevented, you're responsible. I guess the feeling of responsibility uh, always permeated all of my decisions and my actions. And here, where you've got a total lack of responsibility, both personal and for their obligations to society. Correct. So, correct. But but they want to, you know, like I said, they want to feel like like their life has meaning. And so, you know, the employer I was talking about before, where just making them required to do 100 hours a year of volunteer work, all of a sudden they're like, all oh, right, you know, this is we're, we're making an impact on the world and then they don't quit. They don't and have he doesn't have to go rehire somebody and then retrain them. And <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, it really is. Well, I look at another thing. These millennials love the concept of hey, buy a taco and we'll give a taco to people who can't afford to buy one themselves. Right. Uh, or a burrito. Now, look, I mean, what is with that? I mean, that is not going to add meaning to my life. Frankly, if I want to contribute something, I don't want, like I go in the supermarket here in Florida and they say, the cashier says, do you want to contribute to uh, the society to protect uh, forgotten children? And right. I said, no, I don't. Not today. And it's like, <laughs> I don't need them to be generous on my behalf. I can do just fine on my own. Thanks. Right. And, and it's a lot more meaningful. And yet these millennials are suckers for this stuff. They will, if there's two companies and one donates a burrito and the other doesn't, they'll go with the one that donates the burrito, even if it's an inferior burrito. And twice as expensive. Yeah. Because you're, there's no free, right? No. You're paying for right. the donation. And, uh, this enforced or this illusory altruism it <laughs> permeates every level of society, whether it's the government financing poor, starving artists or whatever housing programs, just making people, I think it's family welfare that we're talking about here, as opposed to governmental welfare. Right. And adversity builds greatness. I mean, that, that go back to World War II. I mean, we had virtually no military. And in, a, you know, in three years, we became the dominant military power in the world. You know, yeah. it, it, adversity builds greatness or you fail. And I can pinpoint it to political leaders. Teddy Roosevelt, his wife and his mother died on the same day. And he, he kind of freaked out, but he went out west mm -hmm. and started ranching. And that's what built 
Teddy Roosevelt into the person that he eventually became, yes. becoming, you know, the uh, first police commissioner of New York City and then on to president of the U.S. and a major political figure with many lasting contributions. We could argue what he did, whether. Right, right. But it doesn't matter. It's the point is he took the adversity and made himself and really reinvented himself into another person that we know to be Teddy Roosevelt today. If he didn't have that, maybe he just would have uh, kept doing what he was doing and he wasn't very good at it. He was a sickly person. He had uh, a whole bunch of health problems. He was short and he <laughs> goes on to be this larger than life character. And why don't we learn these lessons from history anymore and personalize them like we once did? Why don't we? And, and a lot of it, you know, we could argue whether it's, it's our culture. We could argue about it being our politics, that the government, hey, if we have all these people dependent upon us, we become the ruling class. Uh, you know, we could go up and down that, that avenue. And it, it's unfortunate that we have to deal with that. But I think the way out of it is, is through our business leaders and capitalism. And that's, you know, that's what, what I'm seeing locally when they call me and say, hey, how do I deal with these millennials? They, they keep, I hire them, I have great employees and they quit yeah. <laughs> and over and over and over. And it costs them money and time. I'm like you got, you got to look at them differently. They need a reason, motivate them and yeah. make them volunteer. And all of a sudden they're keeping their employees. Uh, that's amazing. It used to be, you just gave them a raise and that would be enough. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's, now it's different, huh? So that's what, it, that's what's happening. It is different now. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I know from my own children, what they've accomplished in life, in their careers, and as people, uh, does give me hope for the millennials. But uh, they've got to tough it up here and and find uh, find their inner strength, not dwell on their inner weakness. And and that's where we go back to that parenting skill. When your kid is three years old and and not getting along with his playmate. Let them struggle through that. Don't just automatically jump in there because one of them's crying and, oh, we got to make this right and let's make everybody happy. They're not doing their child a service. That kid needs to start from day one learning how to deal with adversity. That yeah. is so significant in our life because when they start with those simple things that don't have any real consequences, the reality of it is when they learn to deal with those simple issues, you know, we get upset when our kids are upset because their friends smiled at their best friend wrong and now they're best friends. And, you know, we go, oh, that's silly. Get over it. But the reality of it is those simple things like that teach them how to deal with the world when they have real serious issues later. And I think that's what it's all about. So, hey, well, let's keep our fingers crossed, hope that they come to their senses soon and hope for the best. Uh, doctor, where do we find uh, your work and uh, check out what you're doing? Well, MainstreamMentalHealth.org, and uh, we we are out there trying to help our veterans because I think as a society we owe them a debt, and they they went out there, and now we're not able to for whatever reason fulfill that, and we have a lot of our veterans coming back with uh, post traumatic stress disorder and and getting involved with the court systems and things like that, and uh, that. that we're out there spreading the word. Well, that's a very noble undertaking. If you got any questions for the doctor or myself, email me kl at kerrylutz.com. Check out our website, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Subscribe to the newsletter. Also, our Twitter feeds at Kerry Lutz and the Facebook page is Financial Survival Network. Uh, doctor, keep up the great work and we will definitely have you on again. Thank you, Carrie. I appreciate it. I'm at a hospital today and I've got doctors running around. Sorry about the background noise. Not a problem at all. It came in loud and clear. Doctor, keep up the great work. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.